CNC Mind Map for Indoor Massive MIMO Presented by Ahmed Aboud, Jean-Pierre Kansas, Ali Jaber and Fahid Merdadi from University of Limoges In this presentation, we will introduce five points First, an overview of the Indoor Massive MIMO Then, the challenge facing Massive MIMO after that, our proposed CSI map will be presented. Then, our simulation result and at the end, we will introduce the conclusion. What is Massive MIMO? Massive MIMO, which is also known as Large Scale Antenna System, Very Large MIMO or Hyper MIMO, is a 5G mobile technology that makes a clean break with current practice through the use of very large number of service antennas, example hundreds or thousands of antennas, that are operated fully coherently and adaptively. Extra antenna help by focusing the transmission and reception of signal energy into ever smaller region of space, which allows spatial multiplexing. Why indoor massive MIMO? There is a lot of demands for the next mobile network. These demands include incredible amount of user per cell, example universities, schools, hotels. Also include high demand on digital bandwidth that need to connect to the internet. Less power consumption due to limited battery storage. Massive MIMO can offer spatial multiplexing, which increases the number of user terminal per cell. Also, Massive MIMO can increase the rate, which is proportional to the minimum between transmit and received antenna times the log of 1 plus signal to noise ratio. Massive MIMO also can offer the beamforming array gain, which lead to low power consumption at transmitter. How Massive MIMO works? Here we are introducing the time division duplexing reciprocity principle, where first, the user should upload his pilot. This pilot should be orthogonal among users and should be known at both base station and user terminal. Second, channel state information estimation should take place at the base station. In this case, in Massive MIMO, we are introducing a linear estimator. Third, base station can now precode the symbol vector to the user terminal using the channel state information that already estimated. What is the challenge facing Massive MIMO? Considering multi-cell scenario and due to the limited number of orthogonal pilots, pilot reuse may take place. When two users from cross-cell uploading the same pilot, the receiving base station cannot separate their channels. This phenomenon known as uplink pilot contamination. Uplink pilot contamination problem. Due to limited coherence interval, orthogonal pilot sequences can't be too long and thus a limited set of orthogonal pilots can be generated in each cell. So pilot reuse will take place between neighbor cells which will lead to pilot contamination from users in adjacent cells. The effect of pilot contamination will reduce the signal to interference noise ratio, which will affect the overall system performance. The intuition behind our proposal is based on these two hypotheses. The first hypothesis said that CSI values maintain stability at stationary location, but exhibit variability between adjacent positions. This means that stationary user will have the same CSI. Hypothesis 2. In an indoor scenario, there exists a set of user terminals that are not in motion or with low mobility for several coherence interval, and this is normal in every indoor scenario. From hypothesis 1 and 2, one can think of reducing the uplink pilot by storing previous CSI matrices and predict the future CSI matrices instead of estimating it. This is an illustration of our proposed CSI map. One can see that each geographical position is represented with a node in the CSI map. The nodes are connected with directly connected edges. 
these edge are weighted and the weight of the edge is proportional to the transition frequency from one node to another. First, the base station will estimate the channel state information and then a quantized version of this channel state information will be stored at the base station into the CSI map. During learning process, if the new quantized CSI node exists, weight of the edge presenting the transition will be updated. Proposed reciprocity protocol after CSI map learning reached convergence, where no more update for several iterations, base station can predict the next CSI of any user instead of estimating it, which means no more pilot upload and estimation is required. For this purpose, we design two TDD protocol formats. The first format is called Initiative TDD protocol format where it is approximately the same as conventional time division duplexing protocol. Instead, we use here a test symbol. This type of, for, of TDD protocol should be uploaded by all user terminals before the CSI map reach convergence, and also should be uploaded by any user who encounter low SNR. The second format is a predictive format and this format should be uploaded by users after the CSI reach convergence. And as you see there is no pilot in this format. From the block diagram it's clear that user terminal had two choices either to send predictive TDD format or to send initiative TDD format with pilots. This is based on the signal to noise ratio that was received in the forward link. If the signal to noise ratio that they receive is very low, so they will send initiative format. If the signal to interference ratio is high, so they will send the predictive format. After the user terminal send their session, base station should switch between the frames. If the frame is predictive, user base station should predict the next CSI from the CSI map using a codebook. If the TDD frame is initiative, base station should estimate the channel, quantize the CSI, and update the CSI map. And in both cases, the CSI that was obtained by the basis station from prediction or from estimation should be used in pre-coding the forward link. This is the learning algorithm that should be used in order to learn the CSI map. First, estimation of the CSI should take place. After the estimation of the CSI, we should quantize this CSI and get the quantization indices from a codebook. After that, we should search the CSI map for this node. If this node exists, then just update the transition or the edge that lead to this node. If the quantized CSI does not exist, so create a node to represent this CSI and connect this new node to the previous nodes. For CSI prediction, we can just find the maximum weight of the edge issued from the current node. Let's say we know that a specific user is in position NI. To know or to predict the next CSI, we just need to search for the maximum weight issued from this node. So, if we are in position NI and the maximum edge is, let's say, EIX, so the next position should be NX. 
it is also possible for the next node to be the same as the current node. It is possible if the edge issued from the current node to itself is the maximum weighted edge. For example, we can say that a user sitting on his chair is most probably at the next CSI to still have the same CSI. For weight updates, we update all weight issued from the previous node. So, for the winning edge with the maximum weight here indexed by WC, we will add we will add a scalar theta, which also can be used to control the speed of learning. For the other edge's weight here indexed by C prime, we will reduce their weight proportional to their previous weight and also with the scalar theta. Since the CSI map can grow very large, we propose to use a garbage collection algorithm. For any node in the graph with the edge pointing toward it had a very low weight, less than a given threshold, we can delete this node. So, by controlling the threshold, we can just keep on the most visited places in the cell. The figure at the left represents a scenario of 10 user terminal occupying a space of 300 meters square. You can see that the probability of hit or to find the CSI in the map was unstable before 100,000 TDD sessions. But after that, the CSI map start to converge and become more stable. At the right, we are comparing the sum rate versus the number of antenna of conventional massive MIMO and the CSI map we propose. We use to compare this result MRC receiver, which is the maximum ratio combination receiver, and the zero forcing receiver. In both results, in maximum ratio and in zero forcing receiver, the CSI map result overcome the conventional massive MIMO, and especially with the zero forcing receiver. We further compare the result of spectral and energy efficiency with the proposed CSI map. At the left, the spectral efficiency versus the number of base station antenna are introduced for all users in the cell, with the cell interference ratio of alpha equal 25%. All curves shows that with increasing the number of antenna at the base station, the spectral and the energy efficiency increases without limits, but the proposed CSI map can boost this efficiency more than twice. At the right, the energy efficiency can ensure these results and prove the efficiency of the CSI map. By conclusion, we can infer that CSI map can increase the sum rate and spectral efficiency due to reduction in uplink pilots. It also can increase the energy efficiency due to shorter reverse link TDD format. It also reduced training overhead due to CSI prediction instead of estimation. For future work, we are looking to adopt CSI map to work in the outdoor scenario. We are sorry that we cannot attend this conference physically and we thank you for your attention. We look forward to hear your comments and questions on this proposal. Please send your comments to ahmapood at gmail.com.